two years ago, the Swedish company SCA decided to participate in the Volvo Ocean Race with an all-female crew. Okay, put the punches behind you, grab them behind you. Turn around, hands in front of the shoulders. One step up front. Okay, push. Forward crunches, so you need to be coordinated. I think probably what we lack the most at the moment is power, physical power. The only thing moving is our hands, back and forth. What takes the most toll out of the body is the nine months of this event. And there is a non-stoppable downward spiral that your body is going to go through. The thing is that with this competition, there is no set outline of how the day is going to run. You just cannot predict what's going to happen. So you might have to pull 48 hours straight doing that extenuating job. Other times you'll be able to doze off. But from the last two Volvo campaigns, I have not seen anybody taking it easy. Everybody comes back looking like shit. The girls that we have here selected, and still some of the ones that are on trial, there's such a gap in fitness states. And it is clear and obvious to all of us that certain ones of them need to and will have to put in the extra mile and go for a second training session a day because they just need to catch up. I think the main thing is to have a group of girls with the right core skills and the right attitude and willing to work really hard. There's nothing that ever substitutes hard work, so I think we just need to find a group of girls that are going to put their all into it and then we stand a good chance. Nice! I do know how to train and I, I know how to commit hard to a project and work hard for it. I've done that a few times with Olympic campaigns, so hopefully I can, can bring that as well. I come from Paul in Dorset in the UK. I've been sailing my whole life really. I grew up here sailing when I was about seven, but I've been sailing professionally since I graduated from university, so about 10, 11 years now. It was just part of our lifestyle. My dad sailed and, and lots of my friends, so it was just part of our youth. My closest friends actually sort of in the world still are all sailors from, from here. I'd love to say I had an artistic side, but I don't think I do. Growing up, I, I loved art. My mum is quite artistic and all of that side of my family. As a teenager, I was... Actually, I used to give up sailing races to go dancing, much to my dad's um, upset. I remember missing a race of a national championships because I had a matinee performance um, in ballet, and uh, he <laughs> never really forgave me for that. But in the end, he won. Now I'm sailing, not dancing. Things. Yes. So you didn't understand. <laughs> I guess the, my biggest achievement in sailing so far would be uh, being part of Team GB at the Olympics in London and also uh, in match racing, won the World Championships three times. I don't know many other sports where you can have such a variation in age and gender and still be competitive. So for me, that's the most amazing thing about sailing. <laughs> The last six or seven years, I've kind of dreamed of doing the Volvo. The race takes nine months, and the longest legs might be 30 days or more. And it's a big ocean. The worst possible scenario would be a crew member falling overboard. There's a lot of dangers on the boat. Uh, wherever you are on the boat, you can basically fall overboard. You just 
just have to move and not be clipped on and get a bad wave. And that can be very dangerous, you know. It's a machine. It can go incredibly fast. And at the same time, you have to be aware of the pressure of water when water comes over the deck. And you can sort of say, the more water comes over the deck, the faster you're going. These are things you have to realize. It's a toy, but if you don't handle it the right way, it can also be a dangerous toy. So if someone falls in, the other thing we have is the man overboard button on the wheels. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the helmsman will hit that. So even if you see the boat shoot off, then we will have our position to be able to come back to. The safety equipment is our lifeline, basically, and uh, these boats are very dangerous and they go very fast, and so the power of a wave coming over the boat can quite easily knock someone over. There is a risk to fall overboard, and that's something you have to live with. And if you fall overboard, it's very, very difficult to find you again, and you are probably gone forever. When someone falls off, immediately there's a procedure, a man overboard button, which the skipper should press, which gives you a position as to where it was that the person fell off. And there's all kinds of things on the back of the boat that you can throw out the back of the boat to try and pick the person up. Um, and obviously you need to go around and get them. That assumes that you can see them and you can find them. Realistically, it's about 40, 45 minutes from when someone falls off to when you can probably pick them up because you've got to get a lot of sails down and you know, get back and get them without running them over. So when it happens, that's probably one of the biggest crises you can have. If that happens, that would be devastating, of course, for the whole project. In the history of Volvo Ocean Race, I think there has been six people becoming albatrosses. They have fallen overboard, you have not been able to find them, and they are gone forever. Unfortunately, Hans Horvitz was not clipped on when the nose of the boat dived into a wave the water on the deck swept him overboard. Some people can think that we're doing something a bit stupid or crazy and taking lots of risks, but that's people who don't know the sport and know how we analyse each risk and say, is this dangerous? Is this going to put our boat in danger? Is this going to break a sail? So yes, we do take risks, but you can put your life in danger just crossing the road. It is an extreme sport and we do it because we love it. All the reasons why I, I shouldn't be a cook because I'm. I just like everything, so I want to put it all in Me everything. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like cooking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't cook very often at home. <laughs> but don't tell any of the girls this because they're kind of like just taking it on. <laughs> Where's Ruben? Coming out? Wanna say hello? It's two years of your life that you devote to this project and you devote to this team. And I have a little two-year-old son, Kyle. Travelling around the world, I think, uh, and being in a lot of different countries and learning their cultures, I think I'm giving my son a lifetime opportunity which he cannot get in any other way. Yes, no, not in the pool, sorry. <laughs> not in the pool, no. No. <laughs> I'm pretty lucky because my little boy is quite happy with his sailing mum who goes off sailing her boats around the world and he's quite used to that. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> yeah. 
one of the first words he learned was bye bye. <laughs> He's got a nanny and um, and his grandparents. And my little boy's got lots of people who love him when I'm not there to look after him. And I think as long as the parents are happy, then the kids are happy. And that's pretty important philosophy for me. Things have changed. A few years ago, no mother would ever even consider doing this race, and this wouldn't even be heard of. Hello. Oh. Welcome to Brittany, to our little village, Curlin, with a squeaky door. <laughs> For me, home is here in France. This is my life. <laughs> I live with my partner, Romain. We've been together for over 10 years now. Well, he's my French lover. <laughs> the myth of the French lover. Go, Ruben. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. I think it's possible to be a parent and an offshore sailor because there's lots of dads who've been doing it for years and years and years. <laughs> I have friends who have kids the same age as Ruben and they've never spent more than two hours apart. And they find it really hard to imagine that I could leave Ruben for a whole leg of, you know, for a month or, or so. And, um, and f I think it's really individual. Hopefully Ruben will be proud of his mum when he's old enough to understand what we do. Bye-bye, Karen. Bye. I am famous in my own little world, in, um, and especially in France, because the Vendée Globe is a very mediatised race in France. And uh, if I had to pick one thing, well, my biggest achievement is my fourth place in the Vendée Globe, 2008-2009. I have written autographs on the street and in trains and planes, and I remember getting off a plane once and the pilot came running out with a, <laughs> with a, with a, with a pen and a piece of paper asking for my autograph. I'm going to have to go because somebody is too tired and impatient. Coming up after the break. Maybe they won't choose me because this has happened, but then I have to think, come on, it's not even a year until the race. I think now they've chosen five girls and we all know we're on the team. We've become probably a lot closer as a little group. We're slowly realising that we're going to be in this together and yeah, sailing around the world together. Now I'm really scared that my wetsuit's got a cockroach in it. <laughs> Mine was from home. That was horrible. You just have to know, I guess, that this is your home and the team's your new family for the next two years and you have to want to do it. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't move your whole life here. And I mean, you're giving up seeing your family, you're giving up seeing your friends. You miss weddings and friends having babies and, you know, big events at home. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's really important to go and keep doing other things other than just sailing all the time have a bit of time out and just do some fun stuff. 
away from the harbour and our base and everything, yeah. I think it's going to be hard not going home very often and seeing all my friends. I am living now on the other side of the world. <laughs> I guess it's gonna get lonely sometimes, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. This is my dog bear. I guess I'm a pretty easygoing kind of person. I like to have fun and try not to take life too seriously. You want a smoothie? We have I pretty much live out of my bag and all everything I own in some in storage. Are we gonna go my mum and dad always have a room for me or they'll always make a bed available for me if I need it. So yeah, I guess I kind of call home where they live if I needed to go home somewhere. I just kind of live my life of like, I just do everything I want to do. I tend to just go in a direction that seems to be working at the time. Two years ago, I had my own business and I was going really well and all of a sudden I stopped it and went off sailing. So. A lot of the time, a lot of my friends from home don't know exactly what I'm up to, and then a lot of them aren't sailors as well, so they don't really probably understand everything, but I guess it's a fair description that they think I'm a bit nuts, but, uh, yeah, I'm always coming and going and not at home a lot, so, yeah, it's fair enough for them to think that I'm just off running around the world doing crazy things. <laughs> Training for an offshore race is a full-time job. Every morning starts with physical training, then breakfast and a day at sea. But today, the crew is preparing for a night sail. It's an important part of the training. And the plan is to go around the island of Fuerteventura because Gran Canaria is a bit far away for a 24-hour trip. The actual race is a nine-month sail around the world, starting in Alicante, then Cape Town, Abu Dhabi, Sanya in China, New Zealand, ending in Gothenburg, Sweden, 2015. During the nine months, anything can happen, and the crew needs to test everything they can. The Volvo Ocean Race is all about being in the middle of the ocean where there's big waves and strong wind, and to go and get that in the night is quite important for us. But Robin seems to have some problems. My arm that's very sore, so I won't be going sailing today. You're not allowed to, from the doctor, to go away? Doctor's no, orders, no. rest. No, uh, she has a, a tendinitis here. <laughs> it takes some days or even some weeks, uh, depending on the, on the evolution and the response to the treatment. And uh, she cannot uh, go uh, in the boat today, of course. <laughs> We did a gym session. I ended up getting an inflammation in my arm that uh, aggravated all the tendons. And it just got worse and worse throughout the week of sailing. And um, it got to the point where I, I actually couldn't even hold a water bottle anymore. So straight on is OK. What's that driving? The driving would hurt because it's anything on the side. I mean, I'd hate to say it. I wouldn't want to drive. Maybe they won't choose me because this has happened, but then I have to think, come on, it's not even a year until the race. Everybody will have an injury at some point, unfortunately, but it's the nature of this race and this world. And I just feel very confident on these boats. I think I'd be a good crew member. You know, the candidates that we have, it's important that their bodies are going to be able to handle the next two and a half years because it's a long, hard race and the preparation's hard, so you know the, their bodies have to be injury-free to start with and ready to handle us. I have been a shore team member for the last two Volvo Ocean races, so I have done a lot of standing on the dock, pushing the boat off, 
wishing that I could be on the boat sailing. You know, when you're standing there waving the, the boat off the dock, if anything, that's made me realize how much I want this. <laughs> Bye. Uh. My will for this race is intense. I just want this so bad. It's been a dream for, you know, since I was a kid. the end of this training session and uh, we've all progressed pretty good as a team. They've got like a, a group of five now that seem to work well together and they just need to expand that. It's time for the coaches to evaluate this trial period, and at least three women are anxious to know if they'll be offered a contract or not. You have obviously improved a lot during yeah. the trip, but um, I think for us, um, we, we want the best sailors we can find, you know? Yeah. They said we are happy with the five girls we already had in the team. And we are not 100% sure that you can be in the team. We need people stronger and taller than you. Now we have to look after more girls. Uh, I was very sad. Yeah, of course, I'm disappointed. I go back home. Uh, they don't say it's over, but uh, I don't know if I will be in the team. It's hard. We spoke to Natalia, Gian and Robin. We told them that we weren't in a position to be able to commit to them fully yet. I came out of that meeting more confused than I was when I walked in. We haven't felt like we're quite there just yet with them. We want to give other girls a chance still. In an ideal world, we'd have you know a whole lot of six foot tall, strong, uh, awesome helmsman, trimmer type girls. The physical side of things, being bigger and stronger, is going to make the boat get around the world faster. So it's an important part. Unfortunately, I know that they think I'm too small. And so I would love to be taller, but I'm not going to grow. So I need to go home and get leg extensions and become five years younger. I need to work on my strength as much as I can. And that's probably my biggest downfall. Everything's a little bit up in the air, but it's certainly my goal and my dream to be back as soon as I can. So to be honest, I, I'm gonna go home and so can we stop filming? Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. It's just... Yeah. I will miss to not be in the project. I will miss to not be in the, in the mood, you know? And I will be home, and what can I do? Going to the gym. I'm sure the girls were disappointed. Hopefully they understand that's just the way it is at the moment. But, um, you know, I'm sure we haven't seen the last of them all, so I don't think they should be too disappointed, you know, from, from my point of view. To identify the best girls in the world for this task is not an easy thing. If you don't have a good team, there is no platform to stand on, so that doesn't work. The big
biggest worry at the moment is that it will take quite a bit longer time to find the 11 best girls in the world. Because if that takes a longer time, it means less time to go out and sail. Now we have to hurry up so we can start sailing, sailing, sailing. And that's what they need. Don't miss the next episode of No Ordinary Women. So, you ready? So, you ready? They've been around the world four, five, six times before, and it's just like driving a car to them. That's the poo bag. Everyone knows when you've the food because you, you, you go in there. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. 370 boats out there. It's our first race. Yeah. Some girls have never been offshore for that long. It's more than just a work relationship that we have because we're a team that's doing something pretty extreme and we're living in each other's pockets. It is more like a family. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be able to deal with the incidents as they arise. I was really shocked and extremely just gutted. She is a huge asset to the team. I definitely hope that she comes back, yes, fingers crossed.